I mean, I am so proud to be an American. Actually, she said I was about to take my own life. That you're not alone and that your brain is lying to you and that people do care about you and you will be missed if you're gone. I lost my daughter. She died by suicide. And I looked at him. I knew he was dead. And then I had to go treat the guy who shot him. And don't give up. Negu. N-E-G-U. Never, ever give up. Thank you for tuning in to this special series of Faith in Your Recovery. We're coming to you live from Lucas Oil Stadium at the Fire Department International Conference. We hope you enjoy these stories from the front lines. Stay tuned and God bless. Welcome to Faith in Your Recovery. I'm Randy Davis and our guest today is John Wilcock. Welcome, John. Thanks, Randy, Garrett, to be here, and uh, thanks for your invite. Well, we appreciate your willingness to join us and to share your story. Go ahead, tell the folks where you're from, and tell them a little bit about home, okay? Yeah, um, we're uh, we're across visiting from the UK, and uh, our connection with FDIC is we um, we supply water rescue equipment, PPE, dry suits, inflatable boats. So we're very much uh, involved in that. Uh, particular environment uh, for firefighters, for police, law enforcement. Um, so home for me, I uh, live in uh, Newcastle in the northeast of England. Uh, I've got a family, three grown-up children now, and uh, part owner of the business, SafeQuip, who supplies equipment into frontline services. So uh, you made it a yearly tradition to come here. Is this your first time to the FDIC or...? No, this is our fourth, uh, fourth? visit, uh, but it's three years since we were last here oh, uh, yes. due to the pandemic. Yeah, um, So we came across in 2016, and uh, we really came to just have a, a look at the show, and, uh, and then we, we brought some samples across, and people seemed to be interested in our product. So, yeah, we, we've, we've tried to build from there. Um, with the pandemic, obviously things have just uh, gone on hold a little bit, but it's great to be back and, uh, yeah, meet up with people and contacts. So, yeah, it's good to be back. Awesome. Well, it's good to have you. Do you get a chance when you come back to travel around and see some of the sites, or is it more business and back home? Um, yeah, unfortunately, uh, more business uh, back home on this visit. Previously, uh, when we came across, we visited a vendor down in Alabama, so we... Last time we flew into Atlanta and we travelled down to Alabama and then we travelled up uh, to Indiana. We stopped off in Nashville, which was uh, just a fabulous experience. Um, the music was just amazing. People <laughs> I'd never heard. Um, so we've done a little bit of travelling, but yeah, it's it's business focused. So yes. there's not a lot of time for uh, you know travelling down. So we we're here for the week and then we we fly back on on Sunday back to the UK. Okay, okay. My wife and I love Nashville. We've only been there a time or two. One time we spent some good time there and got into some of that same music. All okay. Right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, picked up on a lot of new names. So uh, absolutely, um, the talent there was just. You know, uh, incredible and uh, yeah, I mean, real gifted musicians of, of people that yeah, I've never heard at of, every corner. Yeah, I mean, you just go from bar to bar, but that that main street, I can't remember the name of it, it's just bars, and some of them are sort of three stories, different yes. floors, different bands. Um, it's just yeah, uh, An incredible place. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. once in a lifetime experience. Well, good deal. Thanks again for joining us here today, John. Go ahead and tell us a little bit more about what you do back in the UK. Explain to the folks here who may not be aware of all of that. Okay. Um, when we came in 2016, um, and that's when I first met Skip, uh, we were showing for the first time. And uh, But previous to that, I, I'd come across a guy called Pete Lewin in the UK, um, at one of the fire and rescue shows. And um, he'd got um, Newfoundland dogs there, and he was doing water rescue with dogs, which, uh, because we sell that type of equipment, I was interested and uh, got chatting to him. And, um, yeah, it's just his stories. Uh, you know, I was really touched by his story because he's, he's a, um, a full-time paramedic, but he did this on a volunteer basis in really going around schools and educating children on water safety. And uh, he just funded this himself. He was, as I say, full-time paramedic. And then he was doing water rescue with these Newfoundland dogs that I'd never seen before. And just quite amazing. So uh, that's where it started. And um, I, I just felt so passionate with what he was doing that 
as a company, what could we do? So we started to sort of supply equipment to him and PFDs and life jackets. So Tell the folks what PFD is. Uh, PFD, um, a personal flotation device, so a buoyancy aid, so a foam life jacket. Um, so most of the rescue teams would wear that, um, as I say, as a buoyancy vest. Um, and in the UK, because um, yeah, our, our temperatures are pretty cool, they would uh, wear a dry suit rather than a wetsuit. So a dry suit is a, a fully sealed suit uh, with waterproof zips and, and seals. And then, you know, they would wear the buoyancy aid with that. And it just allowed people to try and stay warm in the water and then have that experience of swimming uh, with the Newfoundlands or getting rescued. Um, so that was the connection with Pete. And we, yeah, we've just we've known each other for quite a lot of years. And we, we just try and support him the best way we can and the work that he does. And then... It really developed in this emotional support that uh, he started getting into because uh, recognised that you know life is tough and, and certainly for um, frontline workers, emergency service workers, military, you know it's uh, we're aware now of, of mental sort of problems and difficulties and issues. Um, so it was a bit like I suppose going back years on weekend of Florida, you know, swimming with the dolphins was therapeutic. Okay. Yes, yes. Um, and so Pete got into this emotional support, um, which was just amazing. And I think you know just the response and the effect that it had on people. I, I think I remember I think from 9/11 um, there was some uh, information there that people couldn't struggle to pass on their experience from 9-11 but the dogs therapy dogs really were helpful and, and I suppose maybe that was the connection of people could just open up the dog just seemed to encourage people to offload um, so yeah it just really interested me and um, so that, that's how we got involved with Pete really um, interesting story we were blessed yesterday to have one of Pete's cohorts with us Joe. right okay and he shared a lot of that with us I'd ask him the question about the size of a Newfoundland yeah. Yeah. and he said right at 200 pounds yep he said their their paws are webbed much like a mm -hmm. polar bear and I'm just seeing this monstrous animal swim out and I'm thinking is it coming to eat me <laughs> or is it coming to save me absolutely and absolutely they're yeah. just gentle giants when trained yeah. that yeah. way and yeah. just you know I'm used to seeing small emotional support yeah. dogs more like the Pomeranian that you pick up in sure, your arm sure. or others but when there's one this size uh, that's also a protector <laughs> yeah <laughs> Just I, by uh, visual. I understand what you say Randy because I think you know you're looking at a Newfoundland coming to you swimming in the water uh, it looks a bit scary uh, but yeah just gentle giants and uh, yeah um just incredible strength and agility um but I, yeah i just think it's uh, the, the therapy side of it's just really quite amazing how uh, they can connect with humans and uh yeah i think pete's got lots of stories where you know people have been in really really dark places and been able to swim with the dogs and and just being able to open up people maybe yeah, maybe about to sort of take their own life, yes, you know, and there's yes. been a lot of stories of that, people being very, very close and, and had that experience with the dogs and it's just, it's just brought them back. I uh, remember as a child, five, six, seven years old, I had a dog by the name of Bozo. <laughs> Bozo was 57 varieties. He was kind of like hide, okay, catch, yeah. okay. But Bozo listened to everything I ever had to say. Mm -hmm. Bozo never turned his back on me. Bozo never talked back to me. Bozo was there. I can yeah. see that with these new families. Yeah. They're just there and you have that sense of freedom. No, absolutely. We you know, we've I've grew, grown up with dogs uh, you know, from childhood and we we have dogs at home and uh, yeah. Um, yeah, just I don't know connection. Um, just intelligent animals, and as you say, always a welcome face when you come in the door. Uh, as you rightly say, don't talk back. And uh, yeah, very intelligent. A lot of dogs. Yes. And yes. Uh, I mean, now what they're doing with dogs, training them to, uh, you know, uh, detect disease and and, and 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 medical issues as well. Um, in search, you know, dogs can actually pick the scent up underwater um, if you know looking to retrieve things. So, yeah, uh, really intelligent.
intelligent, and, and the Newfoundlands, yeah, especially. It's an, it's an incredible approach that we don't often think of until I was able to connect with Skip Ackman. Mm-hmm. That was my first opening to hearing about the Newfoundlands, okay. Pete, okay. and the work he does, and those who are involved with him. But I see that need because those who are in the emergency medical services, the traumas they face, the issues they deal with. I was just speaking with another gentleman here, and he talked about you don't have that freedom to open up because people will look down on you, or at least you feel like they're looking at you different. Sure, sure. It can cost your job, your profession, to be honest about it. But I've also heard many stories here of late of those fire departments supporting that individual going to rehab. That's important. Mental health, we touched on that just a few moments ago, you and I. Mental health, the the issues are growing. And, of course, I believe the pandemic, we're going to see so much PTSD as a result of it. I think we're already seeing it. It's not five years away. It's today. Yeah, sure, sure. I think, um, and I know from Pete, um, he's he works for um, East Midland Ambulance as a paramedic. So um, they've tasked him to do some emotional support for their own staff and employees um, due to the pandemic. Yes. I mean, it, it, it's, it's caused, you know, there's no doubt, it's caused massive issues. And, yeah, it's a little bit of a ticking time bomb, I think, you know, uh, which we're seeing. So um, I think very, very needful. And um, I, I was just talking to Pete just recently uh, about a girl that was uh, a helper with the team. And... Um, she, she was late coming, and uh, basically she apologised to Pete and uh, said, oh, "I'm sorry, I'm late." And said, "No, no, no, no problems." And she said, "Actually, she said I was about to take my own life." But she said, "Coming here and just going to meet up with the dogs just <clears throat> stopped me from doing that." And uh, it's just, I think, quite incredible how close people can be oh to taking their own life, and and so I. I think really we, we, we can't underestimate um, you know mental health issues. It's 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 massive. Yes. Um, and and the things that people are facing. I think the pandemic of just that hopelessness in trying to help people. Uh, I was talking to a firefighter yesterday here in the states, and um, his wife works in an emergency department in the U.S. and. He just told me about an incident where she came home. She said she's a very strong person. She manages an emergency response department. She came home in tears because that day she'd lost 11 people and just felt helpless. Oh, Um, I talked to so many through that. that Helpless was the word I heard over and over. So much they wanted to do, so little they could do in the sense of changing the outcome. So I I can't imagine how that must feel. Oh, Um, So, yeah... um, very needful and uh, yeah look glad I was able to I uh, met Skip here I um, met him at the FDIC show and I went across we got into conversation and I thought about Pete and just trying to link those two together and the rest is history uh, I mean those two are like brothers and I think the I think they nearly speak to each other every day um, which is great and um, you know it's just it's nice when you're in business, you know, you, you, your life's tied up with business, but it's just nice sometimes to put something back um, that's not all about business uh, and to help people. Um, and hopefully, you know, we can be a part of that journey, just helping if it's one person from uh, uh, just taking them from that dark place. And, and uh, Yes, if we'd all take on that attitude, it'd be a different world. You know, yeah. I'd look at you, I don't see the issues going on inside you. <laughs> I don't see the battles you're facing. I don't know what your yesterday was. I'm not even sure what this moment is sometimes. But if we'll listen, we'll tune in, and just give people a chance to be honest without judgment. Sure. Sure. Yeah. yeah. And the suicide rate in America, I'm going to guess in the U.K., I, you know, I obviously have no idea, but I can't imagine it being much different with all the stressors we have anymore. It just continues to climb. The alcoholism, drug addiction, everything together. We all cope one way or the other. It's just not always a healthy way. Absolutely, yeah. I mean, I know in the UK, young men, the uh, suicide rate in young men is is growing alarmingly. Um, Maybe people just don't see any hope for the future. And um, it's, uh, yeah, it's it's quite scary. I... I, um, 
a number of years ago, I was working with London Fire Brigade. We were looking, we're doing a uh, presentation with some boats on, on the River Thames in London. And uh, one of the guys said to me there, he said, the, the biggest suicide rate on the river, I mean, the people jump off the bridges there, was between Christmas and New Year. And I was just amazed, but it's just that loneliness, maybe not having family and just that desperation. But he said that week between Christmas and New Year in London, they would probably have 80 suicides. I know that here in the United States, that's very much the same statistic. There, at least the month of January, we go into that gray part of the year. Yeah, sure. We lose that sunshine that we yeah. so desperately need. We've made it through the holidays, then it's that let down afterwards in part. Yeah. I liked what you had to say earlier going back to 9-11 and the trauma that so many faced and dealt with turned to the dogs. Yeah. You know, they, they found that comfort, that solace there. And uh, we need to be on that search. No, it's not at the bottom of the bottle, be that bottle full of pills or alcohol and find a positive way to continue to move forward. Sure, sure, yeah. No, it's, uh, I think everything we, you know, every little we can do, just hopefully, if it saves one life, um, it's all worthwhile. But, um, yeah, I, I, I guess it's when you look at the, the numbers and, uh, and the issues of and mental health, it's, uh, yeah, it just seems huge. And Stand I suppose it. sometimes we could sort of say, well, you know, we're doing our little bit, you know, but I think hopefully a little bit here, a little bit there, and link that together, and people share their experience with other people. Um, I, I think, you know, get that message out there that there is hope, yes. and there are people there to help. And, and I guess I've had to learn, um, sometimes it's just people want something to listen to them. That's it. We don't have the answers sometimes, but just for people just to be able to share and unburden themselves. Um, sometimes we underestimate how powerful that is. Yes, and that's proven by the dogs there because, sure. you know, you don't get that talk back, mm -hmm. you don't get that judgment. They're going to continue to listen. And, uh, you know, I look around this place here at Lucas Oil Stadium today with the thousands of people that are here and I think of how many heroes there are here, lives that have been saved by actions that I'm not qualified to carry out. And then on the other side of that, I think of the pain they've been through for those moments where they couldn't make that difference. Yeah, I think, and I think the thing we have to learn is, is uh, mental health issues is no respect for people. I mean, I know a lot of people in the services who are very strong physical people, but you know, we can all become susceptible to it. Sometimes we think we're Teflon coated and it will never touch us. But uh, in my experience, um, I mean, my own wife, uh, uh, she's suffered for many years with depression and anxiety. Um, I, I don't know myself what that's like. I just know what it's like to live, some, live with somebody that has that. Yes. And, and, and how to sort of react and, and know when to put the arms around the shoulder and, and know where to sort of just step, step back. back. Um, so, yeah, a little bit of experience, but not personal experience from having that personal trauma in my life. Um, but I, I know so many people that I would have thought it would have never, ever have touched some strong people, confident people. But I've learned that it is no respecter of people however right. strong you think you are. Absolutely. There's no way to guard yourself against it when you've got a heart and you live with that heart at times. And I think, I think the issue is that, yeah, sadly, it, it had a stigma to it, didn't it? You know, there was a shame to it. People wouldn't open up because they felt a shame, a weakness, that stigmatism that, you know, people, because there was no sort of physical signs, you couldn't actually see inside that person. So and, who's and going to believe me? They're, yeah. Unfortunately, so many times if I open up, people are going to think, pardon the expression, I'm nuts. Yeah. I'm crazy. Yeah. They don't see it as a disease. They see it as a snap yeah. your fingers and get over it kind of thing. Yeah. And I've heard that over and over with addictions, be it drugs or alcohol. Why don't they just stop? Well, they wish they could. And people in that depression wish that tomorrow's sun would bring them out of it sure. forever. Sure, sure. And yeah. so uh, we've got to walk with them, not behind them and push them in front and pull, but walk beside. And I, and I think, look, I think people are more aware of it now. So I think that's a positive. Um, and I think, you know, we, 
people now hopefully feel that it's you know there's so many people affected now and, and looking around that it, it it's we've lost that stigmatism that that sort of shame that's associated with it and that people feel maybe for, more able and, and we're seeing some of the big stars in the world I oh mean that, that are opening up and I think I think that's encouraging because I think people some people look up to these people and think yeah that they you know they're They've untouchable got it all uh, got it all but yeah some of the richest people on earth are some of the saddest and most miserable people on earth so um, in one sense I think you know that awareness is is really that message you get it getting out and, and hopefully that's a message of hope that you're not alone and um, there are a lot of people in the same boat but there are people there to try and help to support uh, and help people along that journey and taking them from that I call it a dark place um, yes. in, in, into a better place yes. and, uh, and sometimes that doesn't happen overnight it's a bit of a journey but Hopefully, if we can help people along that journey, then uh, that's really rewarding. Absolutely. So to anybody out there who may be struggling with, you know, we'll start off with addiction, certainly depression, anxiety that's, that's just taking life away from you. It's okay to step up. It's okay to speak up. There's folks who will help. You know, the Internet. <laughs> We can say whatever we want about it, but it's certainly a resource for research. And find somebody local or find somebody who can meet in me. Worldwide peer support recovery and suicide prevention for you firemen and others in the emergency medical services, look to them. I'm a part of A Better Life, Brianna's Hope, or a support recovery group for those battling the battle with substance use disorder. Check us out on the web at ablbh.org. We'll help out. We don't care where you're from. We'll connect with you across the waters even, okay? And we'll help you find help. We may not be your help, but we don't have any problem resourcing that out. So, John, is there anything you'd like to conclude with here today? No, oh, just to really say thank you for just uh, the invite, being able to share with you. And... Um, I think I would just say, just from my own experiences, it's just, I think the hardest thing is taking that first step. Yes. To reaching out to get that help. And I, and I think uh, that tends to be the biggest hurdle. Um, but I think the good thing, if people just really reach out, take that first step, then that's the hardest step. And I think from there, I think things can get a lot easier. And uh, I'm just so grateful and for the work that you're doing, for Skip, for, for Pete, and, and for many, many others who are unsung heroes uh, who are there just to offer that support. So uh, I, I commend the work, and, uh, yeah, hopefully it can help many people for, for many years. Well, thank you so much. Thank you again thank for you. your time. We may never connect again, but I'll remember this moment, okay? Sure. Thanks, Randy. Uh, yeah. Uh, it's our privilege and pleasure. So, folks, hang in there. Hold on. Your help, your hope may be just around the next corner. Don't give up one step short. We're here. Others are there. We want to be a help, make a difference, and help you live the life you were created to live. Take care. God bless. Thank you.